This is a video that explains how patrons of New Hampshire libraries can use the patron-initiated interlibrary loan request functionality made available by their public library. This video was created prior to the official go-live of the new interlibrary loan system run by the New Hampshire State Library. Most information will be identical to what you will see in the live system. A few minor differences in the screen displays may be observed. This is the New Hampshire Automated Information System Interlibrary Loan System Interface. The system provides facilities for libraries throughout the state to share materials according to the policies and procedures set by each public library. Schools and universities are also welcome to participate in the system if they choose to do so. On this main screen of the system, we happen to be connecting through the state libraries interface, but each public library page will look similar. There is a link at the top to information about patron-initiated interlibrary loan requests. If we click on it, we can display it and see some policy information that will give you some guidance about who uses this, who can use it, and how to sign up if your library is one of the participants in this particular part of the system. If your library does not participate in patron-initiated interlibrary loan, you can visit your public library and they will be happy to place interlibrary loan requests on your behalf if you are a valid patron. Thank you. As a patron of the New Hampshire State Library, I can log into the system and place my own request. In fact, the State Library does not offer this particular function to its patrons. We would be happy to place requests for you at the circulation desk in the main lobby, but we are using the State Library as a demonstration for today's video. To log in, I will go up to the corner of the screen here at the top where it says please log in and click on that link. When I do that, the box that displays tells me what library I am at and gives me a place to put in my username or my barcode. In the case of a patron, I'll have a barcode. So for today's demonstration, I am going to be a patron named Ainsworth Spofford. The barcode for Mr. Spofford is 246-77000070. One three nine, and then I will enter his password. If I clicked remember me, this computer would remember my credentials as Mr. Spofford. If you are doing this from your home computer, you might want to do that so that you can place ILL requests without having to rekey everything. You will still need to put in your password each time. Um, I'm not going to have it remember me for today. So then I click the submit button and your computer may ask you to save things and it will log me into the system and it looks very much like it looked before. Um, as you'll note there is a large training note in the system at the moment because we are still in our training phase. Once the system goes live that note will not be there. The rest of it will look the same. So I'm going to search for the item that I would like to borrow and I would like to borrow a Mrs. Polifax novel. Now Presumably I have already checked my library's own catalog and determined that they do not have this item in my library because if they did I should borrow it from them instead of having an interlibrary loan request because that will be quicker and easier for everyone involved. Okay, I would like to borrow Mrs. Polifax on the China Station. That is the book I'm interested in. So from this screen I can see that there are book copies, there is a large print copy, and there are audio copies. I just need a regular old book, so I'm going to click the Request This Item button. This will bring up a form that already has all the information about my book filled in. You'll notice that it's gray. That's telling you it's coming out of the record in the system, and I can't do anything with any of the boxes that are gray. I can make changes to boxes that are dark text. Um, any edition is acceptable. This particular record is a first edition. I don't really care. I just want to read the novel, so I'm going to leave that checked. But if I really needed the first edition, I could uncheck it, but I don't. I just want a copy of the novel. My contact information is pulling in here from my uh, library system record. So the state library's patron record for Ainsworth Spofford 
contains his email address, his library card number, and so forth. There are no notes in this record for this patron. If there were, that might go there, or I can add one as the patron. And I don't have to, but I'm going to. I'm going to say thank you for placing my request. Okay, and then I click Submit. And in fact, I didn't have to do anything. I could have just gone direct to submit and been done with it. This gives me a little summary of my request, um, basically the information that I had on my previous screen. And I can say OK, and my library request is now placed. And that's all there is to it to place a request. Once I have placed my request, I can follow up on where it is in the process by going to the Your Account link, the top right of the screen. If I have left and come, if I have left the system, which I probably would have if I were following up on it in another day, I would need to log in again, just like I did before, with my patron barcode and my PIN number. Um, what your password or PIN number will be is controlled by your local library, so you will need to ask them if you are unsure what your login credentials are. Are. So I am still logged in from previously, so I come here to your account and I see some different things that I can do. The one that is um, most relevant here is that I can see the items from other libraries and this shows me my interlibrary loan requests that are currently active. It doesn't give me a history of what I've done in the past. Um, that, that data is not retained to protect patron privacy, but what is currently active in the system is visible to me as the patron for my own account. So I am seeing that I have Mrs. Polifax on the China Station by Dorothy Gilman. Um, in my queue, it is request number 110. I placed it on the 20th of September 2019. I'm going to pick it up from the State Library, which is my library for this example. And um, the status of the request is, is it is awaiting approval by library staff. As a patron of the State Library, someone from the State Library will need to approve my, my request and make sure that it's okay for it to go through, that I am a patron in good standing, that they don't already have Mrs. Polifax on the China Station on the shelf at the, public li at the State Library, that kind of thing. So the, the staff will review the request next time they process ILL transactions. Most public libraries in the state process their transactions every day that they are open. Um, so depending on your library's hours will determine how long that takes. So that's what I, how I can see what is, um, is coming up in my queue. When the transaction has been approved and is received at the library, the status will change as it goes through the process so I can see throughout the process where we're at. Another thing that I can do as a patron of a library that allows direct access to the system is that I can do searches and save a list of information um, based on my search. So let's go back to Mrs. Polifax again and we'll do a search for her. And there are a number of other Mrs. Polifax novels besides the one that I placed an interlibrary loan request for. So let's say I'm interested in learning about Mrs. Polifax on Safari. So I will click on the cover of that book and see what things are available in the system for that. And I will pick one of these and take a look at more information about it. Okay, this is Mrs. Polifax series number five. So I'm going to add this to my list by clicking the Add to Your List button. And it lets me create a new list and I'm going to call this Mrs. Polifax. Say OK. And then I'm going to return to my search results and go back again to see the broader search results. And I am also interested in the books of the elusive Mrs. Polifax. And I know this one here, um, the 1985 one, I'd like to keep track of that. So I'm going to put that on my list as well. It goes back on the Mrs. Polifax list. And just to see that again, I'm going to go back to my search results again. 
and I'm also interested in the amazing Mrs. Polifax, so I'm going to add that to my list. Again, I choose the list that I created, Mrs. Polifax, and it was added to my list. I can tell that here at the top, and I say OK. So up here you'll see that I have one list. If I click on it, I can see my list. I have three things. Now, as a logged in patron, my list should retain when I log out and log back in again. I can delete this list, I can print it, I can email it, or I can save it. There's not really much reason to save it because I haven't done anything to it, but if I had made any changes, deleted something, for example, I would want to save. So that is how you can use a list to keep track of things that you may want to refer to in the future. After I get my Mrs. Polifax novel, read it, return it to my, my library, I may want to get another one. So while I was searching, I can retain that list to use it in the future. So that is our presentation on how patrons of New Hampshire libraries can use the patron-initiated interlibrary loan system. If you have questions about policies or procedures, please contact your local library for assistance.